Have you been fucking around with shit? Here to make my black shirt with white fur. Yeah. <laughs>talk to you guys, let you know a little bit about me and about my background and why I'm doing this, why I'm building the Church of Beloved Presence. Um, I had a mystical event. I've written about it. I've never done a video about it and I'm going to do, I'm not going to talk about it in this one. I'm going to talk about it in another video uh, right after this one. <laughs> yeah. But it changed my life. It literally, literally changed my life. It, it took me off my path of going to be a lawyer. Okay, I liter literally was at Queens to be a lawyer. I was going to be a lawyer and I didn't know why. And it changed after that. I decided to, well, I didn't decide to do anything, to be honest. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know what I was going to do with this new spiritual, um, mystical awakening, this new life. Like basically what the mystical event did was suddenly what I knew to be true was really, really small. All that I knew that was true was that everything was connected. Everything was one, literally connected. Like literally we're all one giant organism basically. We're all part of the same thing. We're all connected through energy. We all are the same energy. We are literally all the same thing. Um, we're literally um, coming face to face with God every day and every person, everything that exists in the entire universe. Um, it's all connected and it's all loved. It's all loved unconditionally. Like legit, like real unconditional there's no conditions, there's no judgment, there's there's nothing but love in this universe. Um, and nothing's exempt, nothing's outside of it. There's no, and everything's okay. Everything's okay. This was the mystical event. This is the, the truth that I learned about the truth that has never changed. This truth has never changed. The only thing that's ever changed is my ability to connect with it. That's the only thing that's ever changed in my life about this event is my ability to reconnect to that truth because I'm either living it or I'm forgetting about it. And that's the path, right? That's the path of beloved presence. That's beloved presence to me is, is that knowledge that everything that exists is us, is God, is whatever you think of as God, is spiritual source, is Gus, which is um, great universal spirit, Gus. It is universal spirit. It's, it's all of us. And that's just the truth that I have. And it's the truth that I've tried to live from. What I wish existed was something like this. The internet didn't exist when this happened to me. The internet uh, was just starting. I had just gotten my first email f ever, and um, it was through my university. And I could only get my emails if I went into the library at university, and I only knew one other person that had an email, and he was some random guy I met on the bus. So, I mean, the internet wasn't a thing. I didn't have internet at home. In my res or in my house, like, no one had the internet that I knew of. <clears throat> Actually, that's not true. Some of the engineering people did, but it was like a weird, very niche, very techy. Uh, it was really a long time ago. It was the early 90s. Anyways, I keep digressing. There's nowhere to go. Like I'm building the church of beloved, the church of beloved presence because I wanted this back in the day. I needed some place like this. I needed some place to go that was gonna tell me that. Uh, Hey, you're not crazy. Yeah, this is totally something that happens. This is 
called the Kundalini Awakening. And yeah, it's all right. Here's what you need to do. Here's some options for your path. Here's some things that you could think about. Hey, have you ever considered what you want to do now? Like now that your whole life plan has been blown to shreds because of this event and being a lawyer seems like a really empty goal now because it legit was an empty fucking goal for me at that point. Why do you want to be a lawyer? I don't know. I didn't give a shit about law. And what's interesting now is what I know about law now means I would have just shriveled and died in law because it's not about truth. It's about presenting spin of truth. Who can present the best spin and convince the judge or whoever that it's true. Like it's, it's gross. What I know about the legal system is, is I would have drowned. I would have been, I would have been dying inside. (laughs) So I didn't have a plan. I didn't know what to do with this. To be honest, I did have ideas about what I wanted to do and I dismissed them almost immediately because they seemed ridiculous. Um, One of them is that I wanted to talk to people on TV or something about living a mystical life and immediately said no to that because I'm not special. What is special? By the way, special is bullshit. And all the ideas that I had, I just, I dismissed them for a long time because I had no role models. I had no pathways. I had no, no clear set path of how to go from my mystical event to a livelihood that would bring me soul fulfilling joy. There was no straightforward path. Things for professions were really simple. If you wanted to be a teacher, go and do that. And that's another thing. I wanted to be a teacher, but I wasn't accepted and I never tried again. I just quit. Here's the thing, too, that I'm going to repeat over and over again. Don't quit. If you want to do something, just keep doing it. Don't quit. That's a true failure. Don't quit. Just keep trying. It doesn't matter if you get rejected over and over and over again. It doesn't matter. Because all that's going to matter is when that one person finally says yes and you make it through. Okay? Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't give up when it's hard. You can change direction if you're not feeling it anymore. That's legit. I wanted to be involved in art. So when I graduated from university, I um, started working in an art store. That seemed pretty cool. And I really loved it. I loved the people I met. I loved the work that I did. It was a retail store, which I knew I knew how to retail. Um, and I was selling art supplies. So I was meeting a really, like a lot of great people. And I learned a lot. And I worked there for 17 years. I worked there until I got fired. No, I didn't get fired. I worked there until I got downsized. That's basically what happened. Everything's been different since then. Um, That was five years ago. I've tried different things at different times to follow through with um, living from my mystical event, living from from being a mystic, from being guided by intuition and spirit and vision. But one of the things I've realized about it is you have to go full on. You can't choose to do that kind of, okay, this is risky enough. Uh, This is, oh, this is most likely to be successful. Like, I was doing comics for a while. I love doing comics, but it's not um, the best way for me to express myself. I express myself best through video and through writing, Um, talking, basically. I talk better than I make art. And the thing about art is that uh, I know in my heart that I'm not willing to take the time and the effort needed to get really good. I was always okay, but I don't. I don't have the drive to be really great. And that's what you need to be a good artist, is you need that drive to always be 
working on it, always be improving, always getting better, always learning and trying and stretching and pushing and creating. And I just, I don't have that for art. Um, I enjoy art. I love art. Um, I still will do art every now and then, but my love and my joy is in writing and talking. And so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I also tried to do marketing because I love marketing. And I love the I, I love everything around the idea, this, this psychology around marketing and selling, this psychology around what are you really saying and the meaning. I love the meaning of things as opposed to just the surface of things. I love that part about marketing. And I, and I really love uh, thinking up ways where other people can, can, can market and to, can sell themselves and that kind of thing. Um, but then it became a chore <laughs> and it's because it's not, it's not the thing. Like it's always trying to choose something safe. It's always trying to choose something that I can explain to my family. So what are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm being a marketing consultant for artists. Oh, okay. I can understand that. What are you doing? Oh, oh I'm, the, I'm high the high priestess, priestess of, of, holy of holy shit at the, at the church of, of beloved, beloved presence. presence? what <laughs> right yeah so oh that's what I'm doing <sighs> anyway I stopped uh including my family in my plans I stopped telling them what I was doing I stopped telling them what I was working on um they just know that I have a full-time job and that's fine that's all they need to know about they don't need to know about this because they don't support it they don't get it um they don't support me or support the work or share it or tell anyone about it or help me market it or sell it. They don't do anything supportive except get uncomfortable and a little bit afraid for me um, or dismissive. And I just, I don't need it. So I don't share with them anymore, which is a good thing for you to do. Go to people who support you. Go to people who understand what you're trying to do. Go to the community that's going to actually cheer for you, cheer your wins, and want you to succeed. Go where you're wanted. Go where you're known. Go where you can get the nourishment and the help that you need. So right now, this is it. This is very beginning days of this, uh, but this has been something that's been um, bubbling up in me for probably the last five years in this kind of our incarnation. And I just kept saying, no, that's stupid. <laughs> no, that's a church. But every time I tried to talk about it, it always came out as a church because this to me is holy work. This is holy, holy work that we do. This, this is the most holy work that you can do in your life is, is living from that point of spirit source, living from that, <laughs> that point of joyful creation. It's hard work. Like who would have known? It's hard work. And part of the hard work too is just constantly moving away all the crap that gets in the way. Like, that's what is a surprise to me is it's not about learning or becoming or being better. It's literally like taking away everything that's getting in the way of, of that shine, being able to shine bright and me being able to feel that, that presence, that beloved presence, that source of oneness. Uh, anytime I want to talk about this stuff, I cry, but I love these tears because they're tears of like living. This is the experience of being alive. This is the experience of being fully alive. Um, and I want this for everyone, not necessarily the tears you do you, but like I cry when I'm happy. I'm, I cry when I'm joyful. I cry when I'm sad. I'm cry when I'm I'm emotionally fulfilled. So right now I work a job full time. Actually, that's not true. Right now I'm off work because I broke my foot at work. Ah. 
surprise and exciting for me. Uh, I worked on a broken foot for eight weeks because, I don't know, I thought the air cast was a miracle and would heal my foot even though I walked on it for eight hours a day every day for eight weeks. It sounds so stupid in retrospect, but eh, that's what I did. But now I'm off and I'm off getting coverage. So this is me using as much of this time as I can to do as much of this work as I can. I'm writing. I wrote a book. I'm currently, duh, I, <laughs> I write. I write every day. I write every day for at least an hour. I have very small writing goals when it comes to um, the novel because uh, of my day job that normally happens. I have to be able to do something every day for writing. So I write for an hour or 500 words every day. And so I finished, I finished my first novel. Um, I'm working on the second. I've only got maybe 6,000 words down on the second, but that's okay. And I'm looking for an agent. I am applying for agents, querying agents uh, every week, one a week until someone says yes. Anyway, this is a really convoluted blah, blah, blah. This is me, but this is me. Welcome to my life. Welcome to what I do. Hope you stick around. Hope you like what you see. And if you want to, um, if you want to join the Patreon, do that. That'd be great. Love to have you. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of different tiers. Um, and the higher tiers, there's more accountability. There's more interaction. There's just, there's more, there's more support as you get into the tiers. Okay. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. <sighs> Bring it to earth. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks. See yes. See yes. I have no good tagline. All right. Gary. <laughs> Hi buddy. He so wants to get pet. He's just been wandering around here knocking on the mic and shit. There's probably no sound. There probably hasn't been any sound for the last 20 minutes. There better be sound. It's not a video unless Leslie cries. <laughs>